Uh, today, we're going to continue our series on the Night Orc variation, and uh, which starts out, as you may remember, Knight F3, D6, D4, CD4, Knight D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, A6. So, so far, I've only looked at some really, I guess, sort of aggressive moves for white, moves that really pose immediate questions to black, you know, like F4, for example, how are you going to stop E5? Or bishop g5, how are you going to prevent me from crippling your pawn structure? Or bishop c4, immediately putting pressure on a weak point on f7. But today we're going to look at a quieter line with uh, bishop e2. So uh, bishop e2 at first glance doesn't really threaten anything or put any pressure on black. And uh, for a long time it was never considered to really yield white any uh, advantage. But it's recently kind of come back to chess a little bit as a move that can be played uh, and we just got a position where might maybe even has a little bit of an edge and it's easier to play and it's definitely even seen at top levels for example Hikaru Nakamura defeated a previous champion Alexander Shabalov in round one with this move so in that game Shabalov played e6 which is a move I myself like but uh, we're not really going to take a look at e6 much because, again, this is just going to transpose to a Shevenigan, which I'm thinking I'll probably do a series on sometime, but uh, it's kind of a different sort of game. So the knight offer is really characterized by black playing e5 in this position. So here, uh, white has to move his knight, and uh, I think knight b3 calls attention to itself. And now the struggle begins. So there's a few key points. White wants to uh, quickly take control of the d5 square. Uh, he maybe wants to play f4. So it moves like f4 or bishop g5 make him into play. Meanwhile, black wants to develop all his pieces, maybe play b5, bishop b7, or maybe just play bishop e6, and almost certainly develop the knight to d7. So um, in this position, bishop e7 is the most common move for black. And um, now there's a few ways for white to play. One very interesting way is bishop g5, just immediately putting pressure to this knight, because bl the move black would like to play is knight bd7, uh, which protects the knight, and because you don't want to let white take it, like if black plays a silly move like h6, you don't want to let white take it and come into d5 uh, unopposed. So... Knight bd7, if white takes this knight, black replaces it with another knight, and f d5 will be covered. But one thing about knight bd7 is, if you think for a second, uh, which piece is going to be unhappy about this move? Well, it's going to be the c8 bishop, of course. It wants to go to e6 in a lot of cases. So after bishop g5, bishop e6 is a common move. And now, just trying to prepare knight bd7, and white wastes no time. Bishop takes f6. Bishop takes f6, knight d5. And we have an interesting, almost Sveshnikov-like position after a move, let's say, bishop g5, where white has control of a d5 square, but uh, that's basically all he has going for him right now. Uh, it's not like... It's a very pretty piece on d5 for sure, but it's not quite clear what white's doing. And unlike in the Sveshnikov where uh, white... In the Sveshnikov, white often has ideas of playing a4 and uh, breaking up black's pawn chain with b5. But here, black doesn't ever have to play b5. He can just castle, maybe play like knight d7 to f6 or to b6, and just try to maybe play rook c8 or play f5. Just try to generate play and not try to keep himself from uh, making too many weaknesses. And also, uh, just like in the Sveshnikov, White does have one piece that is not very good. In Sveshnikov, it's on a3, but here it's on b3, and it's also got very little feature. So uh, I think this position is approximately equal. It yields uh, chances for white for sure. But I think a more, a more calm way of playing uh, is castles. And it's a very, at first glance, tame position, but it really contains a lot of poison to it. So black castles, and white plays bishop e3. So here comes uh, the parting of the roads, if you will. It's very hard to see what black's next move is. If he could play b5 and bishop b7, he'd be a very happy camper, just trying to push through d5 or play b4 and uh, hit this pawn e4. So his pawn should be like b5, b4, bishop b7, moves like that. The problem if he plays b5 right now is white will play a4. Immediately, 
uh, put in question to this black pawn on b5 and what black will do. So if black plays b4, knight d5, uh, it's kind of tough to see what white's next move is. Uh, for example, if, or sorry, black's next move. If knight takes e4, then bishop f3 is going to be devastating, um, attacking this knight and then behind it the rook. So if black retreats the knight, white will take the, take it or the bishop and follow up by taking the rook on a8. And if uh, white tries to defend the knight with a move like f5, then, well, we'll take it first of all just to get rid of a good piece. But I think check and queen d5 is going to uh, spell disaster for black. So knight takes e4 is no good. And if knight takes d5, well, white has a pretty pleasant choice here between queen takes d5 and e takes d5. Uh, queen takes d5 looks like it just wins on the spot because uh, this rook has nowhere to go. But actually, after queen c7, it's not so easy because if queen takes a8, bishop b7, uh, queen a7, uh, knight, b, uh, knight d7. It's hard to see what white's going to do about rook a8. But, um, or uh, actually, I think the best move here is probably knight c6, which just full on traps the queen. There's no way for white to prevent uh, bishop b7. But, um, I think, but after queen c7, there's other things white can do. White can play with like rook fc1, just trying to push c3 through and break up black's queen side. But I think uh, maybe a better move is e takes d5. And um, the point is, it's very hard to see what black's going to do about developing his pieces. For example, f5 looks very normal, trying to gain space on the king side and maybe advance e4 or f4 or both. But here, white will play a5, which fixes this pawn on b4, which will very shortly fall. There's just no way black will be able to defend it. And it gives white the b6 square for his bishop if black is so inclined to play f4. So. And if black plays a5 himself to prevent uh, a5 from white, then move like bishop b5 is going to be extremely powerful. It's an excellent piece. I think to start out, white might just play rook c1, actually, and try to play c3. And or Actually, actually uh, queen d2 is probably the best way to go about it, because after rook c1, black will be able to play bishop d7 and hit this pawn on a4. But after queen d2, white is still trying to play c3, and it's hard to see what black's going to do about it. And if black ever plays f5, well, white plays f4. And this doesn't seem like such a big deal for white to deal with. If black ever plays e4 or e takes f4, white will have an excellent square on d4 for his knight after uh, exchanges ensue. And I think that uh, white can look at the future with great confidence. So b4 doesn't look very good. Likewise, b takes a4, rook takes a4. Just gives black a weak pawn on a6, gives white the c4 square for his rook or bishop, and uh, maybe knight a5 resource in some cases. For example, maybe like bishop b7, white will play knight a5 is a very strong move to put immediate question to this bishop. And maybe bishop c8, knight c4, eyeing b6. It's a horrible position for white. So the last opportunity for black to do something here is bishop b7, after which a takes b5, a takes b5. Rook takes a8, bishop takes a8. Uh, white, can't white can't immediately win a pawn on b5 because e4 is hanging too. But I think bishop takes b5, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, b4. White can be comfortable of a positional advantage because black's bishop on e7 is quite poor and white's uh, majority will be able to, it already has a passed pawn on b2. And it's, I think white can approach the future with confidence. And I should also point out if knight d7 from black, white might actually just want to take it and play knight c5 and get a position like this one. I'm not sure that this is for everybody, but it's a definitely a playable position. And um, if not, you know, there's always moves like uh, queen d2 followed by rook d1 or rook a1. And I think white will have uh, an advantage. So for this reason, b5, I don't think is really an accepted move here. So the three moves that I have seen played are bishop e6, knight bd7, and b6. And uh, personally, I believe bishop e6 is the best move. It is uh, the work of Boris Gelfand. So uh, the main drawback of this move is white will play something like f3, or actually 
f3 can wait. Let's say queen d3. And white's plan is very simple. He wants to play knight d5 and disrupt uh, black's development, sort of. If black plays d5 himself, uh, his position will probably open up a bit too fast for him to handle in a position like this. It's going to be difficult for him to develop his pieces and white can be comfortable with an advantage. So he can't play d5 just yet. So a move... But the problem is black wants to develop this knight, but on either uh, c6 after knight d5 or on d7, uh, black cannot take with a knight, which is a big problem for him. So, because if knight takes d5 here, he takes d5, traps the bishop, and, uh, well, actually, after knight c6, knight d5, black, I guess, can take with a knight because of uh, knight d4, but uh, maybe white will play a preparatory move, let's say, uh, rook fd1, and the knight on c6 just seems misplaced because white will play a3, and it's a good question what the knight's doing there. So knight bd7, knight d5. But here black has a really cool option that is a bit strange, but I think quite strong, and that's bishop takes d5, e takes d5, knight c5. So this looks ridiculous because we get this position, white has a powerful pass, D pawn, which he's about to protect with c4. Black's got a stuck bishop. White has the bishop pair. Why is white not just much better? Well, the point here is black plays uh, e4. The queen moves somewhere, let's say d2. And now bishop d6, blockading this past pawn. Black's plan is very simple. He's going to play queen c7, putting pressure on h2. He's going to play moves like knight d7, rook e8, f5. There's going to be some serious attacking potential, and it's hard to see what white's going to do with the queen side. His pieces are very pretty, but even if he somehow manages to play a3 and b4, let's say uh, in this position white plays a3, queen c7, say h3, rook a8, b4, knight d7, even still it's hard to see how white's going to make progress. Meanwhile, black very clearly wants to play f5, f4, and I think it's uh, not a bad position at all for black. So, there are, of course, other moves. After knight c5, I think, objectively speaking, queen d2 may be the best move. But after a move like uh, knight e4, queen b4, maybe a5, and black will try to play f5 or bishop g5, I don't think white can expect much of an advantage. So, I think that's the best way of playing. But there's also uh, moves like b6. Now, the point here is black wants to play bishop b7, but he doesn't want to have a4 uh, be a devastating blow. So um, now you can see moves like uh, f3, bishop b7, rook f2, knight bd7. And now b5 really could be okay because knight d5 won't be such a big deal. For example, if white plays like bishop f1 and black plays b5, if a4, it's not a big deal. b4, knight d5, I don't think white can really expect too much here after, let's say, knight takes, pawn takes, maybe even just knight f6 hitting the pawn. And like bishop c4, rook c8, there's no way white's really going to get that much here. So uh, in this case, it might make sense for white to play f4 now to stop b5. And then black will play rook c8. I've played this position before on the black side. Um, and white plays bishop f1, rook c7, rook d2, queen a8. And now black, uh, I think, has a fine position. It's actually very tough to see what either side will do to make progress. Black will play rook c8, sure, but what does he do from there? Because he's not going to be able to play d5, really. He's not going to be able to move many of his pieces, but white can't really do much either. So, like, one key idea black has is to sacrifice an exchange on c3. So, um, I think that game went king h1, just trying to get the king out of trouble. Uh, rook fc8, knight c1, and I sacrificed the exchange here and quickly play d5, just trying to open up the center, uh, make my pieces good, and try to take advantage of white's, uh, I guess, poorly placed pieces. So white played, uh, this is about two years ago, white played bishop g5, I played rook takes c3, knight e2, uh, rook c8, and now he takes d5, and I found a, a nice little trick here, knight g4, which threatens uh, knight to f2, actually in the game. Sorry, I uh, played rook c5. It doesn't change too much, though. Knight c4, rook c5. 
ed5, knight g4, which threatens knight f2 and bishop g5. So white has to play f takes g4, bishop takes g5. But if you look at this position, uh, black will very quickly take off this uh, d5 pawn, and he will have a pawn and excellent compensation for the exchange. I think he can be confident of a better position after move like knight f6, hitting these two pawns. And if, if white tries to save the past d pawn, then he's going to really feel the pain of this f2 square. So I think that's a fine way for black to play, but white had definitely had uh, better ways of uh, dealing with the position. I think uh, c4 is interesting here, for example. And uh, just immediately put in question to black, what are you going to do with this pawn? So black should play d4, of course. And I thought that black would have sufficient compensation for the exchange in a position like this one. Uh, white, it's hard to see what white's going to do. Black can quickly play knight d6, knight c5, take control of the dark scores. White's got horrible pawns. a4 is likely to fall, or c4. I think white maybe has a slight advantage here, actually, when I uh, looked at it a little later, when I was a little stronger player. But it's definitely not easy to prove for sure. And I think black will have excellent compensation throughout the entire game. So uh, this is one way of white for white to play. Uh, there's other more aggressive ways. For example, in this position, white could play f4. So uh, it's kind of a simple idea. There's a couple ideas for white. In some cases, he might want to play f takes e5. But mostly, he's going to want to play f5 and g4, and try to dislodge this knight on f6. So um, b5, again, is going to run into a disaster after a4. It's hard to see what uh, black's going to do about this position. It runs into all the same problems it did before. So he's got to find a different move. And now bishop e6 looks extremely silly, because white just plays f5, which is what he wanted to play anyway. So uh, e takes f4 is a very interesting move. Bishop takes f4 and knight c6. So in this position, um, both sides have isolated pawns on d6 and e4. In general, if black can develop his pieces with moves like bishop e6 and knight d7 to and knight e5, these kinds of these structures should favor black. The problem is white is definitely a bit ahead in development already. So white can play a move like uh, let's say king h1 just to sidestep any checks on b6. And let's say here, uh, there's actually a very interesting try for black, knight e8. Or let's play bishop e6 first, actually. And queen d2, knight e8. Now the point is he wants to protect uh, this pawn and play bishop f6 to e5. So uh, white should probably play a move like knight d5 or rook a d1. But I don't think white can really expect too much from a position like this. For example, after rook a d1, bishop f6. If knight d5, bishop e5 takes, knight takes. White's knight on d5 is pretty, but it can be taken off any time, and black's knight on e5 is, at least in my opinion, equally pretty. So I think that black can be reasonably happy with his position here. And uh, if knight d5 right away, um, probably bishop takes d5. And if e takes d5, uh, knight e5, black looks to be okay. Black can play moves like Knight g6, bishop f6, bishop e5, and he's got pretty good control of the dark squares. And white taking this shouldn't really scare him because it's very unbalanced now with uh, the c2 and d5 pawns for white against the e5 and f7 pawns for black. But with the opposite colored bishops, I think that white's pawns are going to be uh, easier to stop than black's because white has already committed this pawn to d5. While to, or, in order to advance, for black to advance the e pawn, you'll need to play f5, which looks incredibly easy, because it is. But in order to advance the d-pawn, white will need to play c4, which and then c5, which is going to be a lot harder, because black will really blockade these squares. For example, if white plays c4 here, black will play b6. And it's hard to see how white's going to push c5 through. For example, if a4, trying to play a5 to control the square, black plays a5 himself. And he's really uh, blockading the dark squares. In the meantime, he can push his f-pawn through with moves like f5, e4, f4. And his bishop on d6 will be excellent at supporting these. And so, I mean, white should probably not play so silly and play a move like rook c1. But even he, here, even maybe bishop c5, just blockading the square and really 
just trying to hold down the position. I think Black should be res reasonably happy right now with his bind on the dark squares. So um, that's one plan. Another plan is just to play knight d7. And if bishop takes d6, say, OK, there's your pawn. Have fun. It's kind of like in the f4 knight orf that we looked at a while ago. And I think that in this position, Black maybe doesn't have quite enough compensation for a pawn, but darn close. Like, for example, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7. Black just has excellent pieces. He'll quickly play rook d8, rook c8. He's got no weaknesses. White's pawn is on c2. It, it's going to be hard to advance in just about any circumstance. And I think that uh, Black can be happy with his chances in this position. So uh, there's other ways to play this, though, for sure. After f4, I think uh, knight bd7 is interesting. So the point is, uh, Black is asking White what he's going to do. If White plays move like bishop e3, well, maybe then Black will take on f4, trying to make him waste the tempo and play move like knight e5. But um, White doesn't have to do that. White can try to do it with something more reasonable like king h1. I, and uh, there's the main test, I think, is going to be f5, just very quickly trying to play g4. So um, b5 now. So I don't think a4 is as much of an issue in this position because white's sender is under so much pressure because he'll never have f3. For example, b4, knight d5. Also, the lack of a bishop on e3 is not helpful. Bishop b7, for example. And um, I'm not sure what white is going to really hope to achieve in this position. For example, uh, if, uh, bishop e3, maybe black can get away with this pawn grab, knight e4. Um, like, first to show, knight e4, maybe uh, bishop f3, let's say black plays, bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, and knight 7 f6. Just playing a quick d5, holding his position together, I think black can have a reasonably comfortable position. White will definitely have a compensation for the pawn, but I think black should be fine. So um, here white really has to just jump into business with a move like g4 soon. So he'll play a3 just to stop b4. And now bishop b7, let's say bishop f3, just trying to protect this point. Black really needs to try to break d5 at some point in order to uh, stop white's attack. One other possibility is rook c8. Actually, I really like this move. The point is if g4, uh, black just says, okay, fine. Rook takes c3 and knight takes c4. Black gets uh, a central pawn. He cripples white's structure and white will have weakened his king side. I think black easily has enough for an exchange. His next moves will be maybe something like queen a8, rook c8, uh, knight b6, knight c4, or knight a4, just pressuring this point. I think that black has a fine position. Black might also want to play queen b6 check instead of queen a8, depending on how he feels. There's lots of things black can do. So, um, I guess in this position, uh, f5 is maybe not as strong right away, but maybe uh, white will play g4, for example, and it's a little tougher for black to deal with here because if g t e takes f4, which would be really nice if black could pull this off because now uh, he will have a similar position to what we looked at earlier where we have this pawn structure where white will have played g4. But here I think g5, and it's kind of hard to see what black's going to do because uh, white will quickly play knight d5, and I think that, or let's actually say bishop takes f4 first, just because uh, maybe we don't want to weaken g5 so early. Now, uh, black can't develop his bishop to e6 like he wanted to before, and if he plays a move like uh, knight 5 then g5, knight d7, maybe h4, protecting this pawn, and white will quickly play knight to d5, I think uh, black might face some problems here. It might not be such an issue, but uh, there's definitely some danger to be aware of. So, um, and again, I think after I think uh, queen d3, or sorry, bishop e3, bishop e6, queen d3 is one of White's best tries. But it's hard to see uh, after knight bd7 how he's really going to get an advantage, and this is what I would definitely recommend playing. He plays slowly with moves like f3. Black will, let's say, play moves like queen c7, rook 
C8, Rook D8, and I don't really see how White's going to plan to make progress. Black will even play Knight C5 in some positions just to make the pawn structure uh, symmetrical, uh, having this imbalance of maybe having this potentially weak pawn on uh, D6. So uh, the thing about Bishop E2 is it's not that aggressive, but uh, there's definitely some lines in it that can be sharp, and it's a very poisonous move. It's it's kind of hard to understand in some situations, but I think that if Black is well prepared and has a decent understanding of the positions, uh, he should be just fine, like in that line I showed with Bishop E6. But it is kind of strange often to feel that B5 it just never works after in the positions where after E5 and Knight B3, whenever Black plays e B5, it almost always runs into A4. Sometimes it's hard for a natural knight or player to get their grip on that, but I think on the whole, Black should basically be okay in this variation. So uh, thanks.